Little known fact, this guy hurts way more to touch than this guy. So much worse. Hey you guys, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk about some of my absolute favorite plants and that is my cactus. So I have tons of different cacti, just a whole assortment. I see a cacti at the greenhouse that I like labeled cacti assorted and if it's cute, like this kind of looks like my thumb. I love it, I had to have it. For the most part, these small cacti are pretty inexpensive. They're all kind of funky and unique. Like look at this guy, he just looks like a little beaver tail. He's so cute. And this guy really truly does look a lot like my thumb. So we're gonna dive into the care for them. I've had cacti for many, many years and I'm going to teach you guys what I do to care for my cacti to make them look as best they can. So first I wanna start with the aesthetic of cacti. I think that they provide such a cool look to a space. So all terracotta, the green cacti, just how like stoic they are. They don't grow crazy fast. I think that they make like that kind of cool Arizona look to a space. So I love a good jungle look and there is a time and a place for jungle, which is like everywhere else, but a cool Arizona cactus moment, I love it. So let's just dive right into the care. As most people know, I live in Canada, in one of the northernmost cities in Canada. It is still pretty sunny, but definitely not all year round. The further you get away from the equator, the shorter your days are in the winter. There's a lot of days up here where if you work a nine to five and you go into the office at nine and come out at five, you never get a chance to see the sun. It's long gone by the time that you're driving home. So not only are these tips for growing successful cacti, but also successfully growing cacti up north. So both in my old apartment, as well as in this house, I have lots of cell facing windows. It was a conscious choice. It was, it's the only way I'll move into a place. You don't need cell facing windows for cacti to survive, but it definitely helps having a south, east, west exposure, always good for that direct sun. They can handle direct sun. So direct sun and plants. You can actually train a plant to be okay in direct sun. I know it, I've done it. I had snake plants in direct sun. I had Monstera deliciosa in south facing direct sun all day long. You can train plants to love direct sun. Cacti, just love direct sun. You can also train plants into less sun, but again, you're going to have a less happy, healthy plant. Personally, I like to really let all these beautiful cacti thrive as best as possible. So I try to put them as close to a south facing window as possible, give them as much nice hot sun all day long, or I supplement with a grow light. And grow lights are way easier than you guys think. You don't have to have these metal panels hanging from your ceiling being all gaudy. You can have just a lamp, like a cheap, cute light fixture with a grow light bulb in it. As long as it's pretty close, like the grow light that I have is maybe only this far away from my cacti. As long as they're pretty close, they do a good job. So tip number one, as much light as you can offer them. And of course, as with anything, play it by ear. If you have it in lower light, maybe you have like a bright north window and you have it in there, you can just adjust other things. Like don't water it as often. Make sure that the mix is super well draining if you're you know, a little heavy handed with watering. There are ways to make things work. Now for watering cacti. So this is interesting. My first cacti I killed by overwatering. The second cacti I killed by underwatering. You can underwater a cacti and they actually like a little more water than you think, but they do not like to have their roots soggy. So I like to pretend like I'm coming in like a desert rain. Sometimes I'm coming in really light and I'm just giving them just enough water to like make it and survive and he'll be okay with, you know, just absorbing what he can. And then a couple times a year, I come in like a desert monsoon and I water him thoroughly to the point where he is like soaking and wet out the bottom and let him dry out in the sun that way. I feel like keeping him on his toes keeps his roots good and strong. <laughs> so this is kind of the approach I take with all my cacti. I always try and think what these plants would actually experience where they're from. So <laughs> once or twice a year, I give them the monsoon. 
And with watering, again, it depends on where your plant is. So south facing, you're probably gonna wanna water a little more often because it's going to be really drying out in that hot sun. If you have it further back from a window where there's less direct light, you'll probably wanna water less often. It just won't deplete its water stores as quickly if it's not like constantly being beaded on by hot sun. So that is about it with watering. More than you think, but definitely not too much. If your soil is looking damp at all, at all, don't touch it. Let it dry out. Another tip specifically for us up north, over the winter, in those depleted daylight hours, you are barely going to water. I think truthfully, I actually really gave most of my cacti a decent watering, maybe twice all winter. There is so little sun and everything is just using its energy to just stay alive. What you really don't want to do in the winter while there's barely any sun is come in and really soak the soil and then have your cacti be trying to dry out with barely any sun. So through the year, more water in the summer, way less in the winter, especially if you're up north like I am. Now for a soil mix, so we can actually see this one's pretty good to see because he's so slim. So I make my own cactus soil mix. It is mostly a good well-draining potting soil. So you're not gonna be looking for anything that's moisture retaining. I also add a ton of coarse sand and a lot of this large perlite you can see. And if I have some bark chips on hand, I will add those as well. Basically what you're trying to create is something really, really, really well draining that will not sit with wet feet after you've watered, especially after you've come in like a monsoon once or twice a year, you do not want this soil down here sitting soggy. So with cacti, succulents, that's really the only time I use sand in a potting mix personally, but works like a charm. Coarse sand, if you can, really fine sand sits quite heavy. Like if you've ever been to a playground after it's rained, that top layer of sand is quite heavy. So that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for that coarse sand that has tons of air gaps in it. And again, always a chunky mix. The final care tip is fertilizer. So I use a cactus specific fertilizer. For the most part, I'm doing a water in fertilizer. And I only do it over the summers. Again, our winters here are so bleak <laughs> that I don't give anything, any extra nutrients, water, any of that. I just let them survive the winter. And then I come in heavy with the juice for the spring. So uh, the water in fertilizer is really good. But again, you're not always watering your plants really deeply. If you're adding water and fertilizer to something like this, fertilizer doesn't take great in really dry soil. So you're gonna kinda wanna be doing that fertilizing more so when you're doing your heavier handed waterings. Or cacti are actually an excellent opportunity to be using a mix in granule fertilizer. That's basically the kind that you sprinkle on and it looks like maybe insect eggs or something, or you can use it while you're doing your repotting. You can mix in some of that fertilizer with that mix, with your sand and your potting soil and all that. And basically those are slow release. They release as you water the plant. So that works really, really well, especially for your cacti and succulents. And final tip before I give you like a mini cactus tour is propagation. So I have here a cactus that suffered some pretty bad root rot when I found it. So he rotted off way at the bottom. He was much taller than this. How you propagate a cactus is actually like, bizarrely easy. You're gonna need a sharp knife and you are going to go straight through it. And it'll look weird because you've literally cut the cactus in half. And what you'll do is you'll let that piece of the cactus callus over for a night or two so that the bottom is no longer squishy, but it's got like a scab to it. And then you will put it into a little bit of your mix about mm, yay deep. And then you will water around the base of it gently, but often. This I propagated this way about a year ago and he's in a deep pot. He has to be because he's not that small, but this is a lot of mix. You do not want this bottom wet. So when I was watering him to help him propagate, I was just hitting him around the base 
just to give them enough wetness to grow some roots and they actually root up pretty quick. So a successful cactus propagation. So something else that works the same, if you have cactus where little pieces can fall off or break off little arms, if you stick them in soil, and again, just keep them a little more hydrated than you normally would right around the base of it, they will root too and grow new cacti. So cacti propagation is actually super easy. Um, I recommend it, it's fun, it's exciting. So easy to propagate. So I will give you a mini cactus tour starting with my dream cactus. So I'll show you a photo. There is a Korean plant shop. I believe it's in Seoul and I follow their Instagram and every few weeks they post these pictures of these cacti they get in with these little straw hats on and it's absolutely everything I've ever wanted in my life. I need it so badly. So every time I'm at a plant shop or a nursery, I'm like checking out all of the cactus to be like, okay, A, anybody cute and small is coming home with me that I like because they're cheap. They're usually like two to five dollars. But if I find one of these big armed cacti, I'm just, oh, I'm so excited. So cue this big guy. He is actually the type of cactus that can grow arms. So I'm very hopeful that he will. He's very stoic, very pretty, very upright. And if you haven't noticed already, I really like the look of terracotta pots. I will probably eventually plant him in here. He's reasonably new. I do have a drainage hole if I take the sticker off. But for now, I just have him in the pot that he came in, which is fine. As long as you have a good mix and it's well draining, this works. I do really like potting directly in terracotta specifically for cacti, but this works just fine. Just dries out a little bit faster. So he is just like absolutely beautiful and I am in love. Next is one that I had kind of showed there. So when I got this guy, I fell for him because he was a lot like this. He was just this bottom piece. And he was so cute again, like a little beaver tail. So he had to come home with me. And then as soon as I got him home, he started to grow this like little pokey thing at the top here. And I'm like, oh my goodness, is he gonna flower for me? But no, he just grew himself a little hat. So that is how these little prickly pears grow. They keep growing themselves like cute little funky hats. Such a cute little cactus. I love them. Um, I've had them for quite a while. I know cacti can be a little spooky to some, but they're actually pretty easy to grow as soon as you get the hang of it. So don't worry, test yourself on a $5 one. Then I had mentioned this guy. This is one of my Peruvian cacti. I love him so much uh, only because we brought him back from the brink of death. He's a little crooked in his pot because <laughs> he settled a little funny, but he is pretty and he will be back to his former glory eventually. Then I showed these two funny little guys. Uh, this one's just another little prickly pear, like a smooth prickly pear. I like those ones, the really pokey ones. Sven seems to have a thing for just the cacti where he goes up and like wants to sniff at them. So I worry about like really prickly ones, especially because I keep a lot of these on the floor. So this guy, the guy who kind of looks a lot like my thumb, I have no idea what he is. I've asked Reddit. Nobody seems to be able to provide me any information on him, but he's cute. I have this cute little guy who is just, I believe a little baby golden barrel, really cute, really pokey, not super expensive to buy, but kind of a really good standard cactus. And I've had this for years. Like when I got it, he was pretty tiny. They grow so slow. <laughs> so he's cute though. I'll have to up pot him probably eventually, but cute little golden barrel. Then I found this fun little guy. Again, a lot of cacti. I am not good at IDing cacti. Aeroids are more my thing um, or just your standard house plants. Cacti, I love them all. No idea who they are. So this guy I saw last summer while I was on a trip to Calgary and he was just too, too weird to not get. So He's like some kind of little trailing cacti. I've kind of wrapped him back up in his pot. He was trailing a lot more, but I want him to be nice and full. He's a cutie, love him. This little guy, I also got on that same trip in Calgary and I haven't repotted him yet, but he's really cute. Again, no idea what he is, but cacti just have this like aesthetic to them that I love. So he's really cute. He looks really cute on the windowsill or on my desk. Love him. Another one that I could never tell you the name of, but he is like the same blue color as like a Cebu blue. Look at him, he's glowing. Um, no idea what it is, but he's so funny and upright and blue 
So he came home with me a couple of years ago. And the final one that I have within hand shot here, I actually keep a lot of these cacti on my desk under some grow lights. So they were all conveniently pretty close for a little mini tour. But uh, this is a bunny ears cactus, forgive him for leaning. I totally dropped him during the move and he fell out of his pot. And like, you can see like his one side is like leaning way over, <laughs> but he's really cute. These are all the new little growths he's put out. You can tell when you need to water this guy because he starts to flop like this. And then it's pretty obvious. Uh, of all my cacti, this is the absolute worst one to accidentally touch. If you rub up on this, it looks so fuzzy and so nice. He had space buns like a month ago, but he's grown a third, but looks so fuzzy and so nice. But holy smokes, if you brush up on this, you will be picking out like a hundred mini prickly little pokies with tweezers for like hours. It's the worst one to accidentally touch. So I try to avoid touching him at all costs. And that is kind of mostly my collection and my pointers for being successful with cacti. I feel like so many stores sell cacti and kind of advertise them as like the beginner friendly plant and then beginners get them and then they accidentally murder them because it's a fine line between loving them to death and starving them of water thinking that they absolutely need no water. Once you get the hang of it, they are really easy, but it's all about getting the hang of it. So don't worry if you're a new plant parent and you have killed a cactus or two, start with the cheap ones and then you can eventually move your way up to the larger ones once you're feeling confident in your non-murdery skills. And I guess I'll end this one here. So if you guys have any questions relating to cacti, succulents, anything, I didn't even show you a succulent tour. There's too many of them. But if you guys have any questions with regards to them, definitely let me know down below. If you have a favorite cactus that I need to look up because I probably need to add it to my collection, let me know that too. I really, really love cacti because they just look so cool and they require so little from me. It's not like a task to remember to water my cacti, if that makes sense, compared to like some of my bigger plants, like my birds of paradise and stuff. So if you like videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel down below. I'm trying to put out at least one new video every week with the summer fast approaching and with how busy my job with landscape gets, I'm hoping one a week is still attainable, but this will be my first summer doing YouTube. So I guess we'll find out together, but thank you guys again so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye you guys.